One of the cruelest truths in technology is that being better doesn't always mean being the winner. Almost 20 years ago, my uncle gave me one of the best pieces of technology I've ever owned, a product that still sells for over $200 on eBay, despite the fact that the format it's built on has been dead for years. Before smartphone media players, before the iPod, there was the Minidisc player, a musical companion ahead of its time. To understand why I loved this thing so much, you need to understand the world into which it was launched. When this model came out in 1999, the preferred device for listening to your Dido on the go was the Discman, and I hated it. It was bulkier than the Walkman it was supposed to replace, because the CDs it played were bigger than cassettes. The CDs were also more fragile than tapes, so they were always skipping if there was even a tiny scratch or speck of dirt on them. Which there always was, since most of us 16-year-olds preferred to store our CDs face down on the floor of our car's passenger side footwell. So when teenage me first unboxed this contraption, I was stunned, not just at the compact footprint of the player itself, but by the discs that came alongside it. They were a third the size of a CD, but they offered the exact same capacity. They were protected by a plastic cartridge, so you could toss them carelessly into a backpack or shuffle them like cards when you really needed Moby to cure your natural blues. And best of all, they were recordable, so you could make your own mixes just like you could with a cassette. That's where the player came in. These eventually came in all shapes and sizes, but the only one I ever owned was this one. Apparently, this was a mid-range device for the time, but every part of it screams premium. As far as the device I owned goes, the magnesium casing would eventually hold up to seven years of constant use, including some drops on asphalt hard enough to pop open the drive. And the mechanism that spat out the discs when you did open that door was just so satisfying. It came with everything you needed in the box, the headset with remote control, a mail-to-mail -mail optical cable, and rechargeable AA batteries were even included, though I quickly swapped those out for disposables, which lasted much longer. And the player had 40 seconds of shock memory built in to prevent mistracking. Matter of fact, I still remember the one time it skipped, because that was the only time in seven years. Because these things never caught on in a big way commercially, you couldn't exactly go to the record store and find the latest Smash Mouth minidisc. As a result, I ended up making great use of the optical port. You'd plug one side of the cable into the Walkman, the other into your stereo or computer's headphone jack, and hit record to burn whatever you wanted right to a minidisc. You had the option of manually dropping in track markers between songs, too. So in practice, the thing worked just like a Discman, only better. I ended up with a pretty solid collection of minidiscs that I just kept cycling through, burning one album over another. And even as busted up as some of them got, they continue to play flawlessly to this day. I can't say that for many of my old CDs. So why did my minidisc collection outlive the format itself? As usual, a combination of killers conspired to crater this curiosity. For one thing, minidisc players were just more expensive than their cassette and CD counterparts, and for another, recording studios never really warmed up to the format. By the time the early aughts rolled around, recordable CDs were so cheap that they were commonplace. Those were followed up by MP3 CDs, and when people were finally ready to ditch their discmen altogether, it was portable hard drives from iOmega, Creative, and yes, Apple, that rushed in and filled the void. Sony officially discontinued Minidisc production in 2013. But I don't care. I'm going to keep this one around as long as it's still running, so I can take in the classics in the way Napster intended. This video was brought to you by Thrifter. Thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. Check out the latest deals at thrifter.com and Tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. Folks, what's your favorite piece of outdated mobile tech? Drop it down in the comments and share your own memories. If it turns out I've got a history with it too, 
you might see that device on the next Retro Review. Please subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss it. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends. <laughs>